Good morning, Fleetwood. Happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Today is Thursday, day one in the six-day cycle. Andrew Mayer PTC is planning a spring fair, and they are looking for student volunteers to help run each station. The fair will be Saturday, May 20th, from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Duties would include taking tickets from students and giving out prizes. There also will be a movie on the lawn at 8 p.m. If interested, stop by the main office. There is a growing referee shortage in youth sports across the country. At Fleetwood, we have a sports officiating class helping students grow their refereeing skills. Nate has more on this. Sports officiating has been a very popular elective amongst the students at Fleetwood since it was first started four years ago. The main objective of the course is to introduce kids to officiating and help them understand what officials go through on a daily basis. Mr. Polish realizes that officials need thick skin because some of the comments that are made to them, but sees many positives in becoming one. Uh, some money to be made officiating. Uh, talk to a lot of students and instead of going to a uh, wise market or the giant to work, they could go officiate a couple soccer games, uh, make the same amount. All assignments in the class are done online with only 15 assignments for the semester. Most work comes from the NFHS course that ensures students know the laws of the game and are capable of being ready to officiate by the end of the semester. Yeah, I have a lot of 20 plus years of experience of officiating, so uh, I, think that, I think that helps some of the stories and some of the experiences. Referees are in high demand right now because of many choosing to not return due to verbal abuse from coaches and parents. Sports officiating is a course worth taking if you're interested in new ways to stay involved with the sport you enjoy but are no longer participating in. Reporting for Tiger TV News, this is Nate Herb. Thanks, Nate. Attention seniors, if you have not already done so, please send verification to Mr. Engelhart of any outside awards slash scholarships that you have received so that you can be recognized at our senior recognition night in May. Information is due to Mr. Engelhart no later than Friday, May 12th, 2023, so if you have any questions, please contact Mr. Engelhart's counseling office. Mr. Farr has been nominated for a Computer Science Educator Award. Ian stopped in to see what his classes were up to. Mr. Farr was nominated for Remake Learning's CS for All PA Exemplary Educator Award. This award recognizes the outstanding work of educators in their effort to expand computer science for all. Well, CS for All PA is an organization just in PA that is a subgroup of CS for All, which is a computer science forward organization that takes companies, schools, state governments, and such, and is really trying to push forward uh, equitable computer science education. On June 14th through 15th, he is going to Harrisburg for the 2023 CS for All PA Summit to compete for the award. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I'm Ian Miller. Congratulations, Mr. Farr. Good luck. We're rooting for you. Underclassmen, check your email to see whether you have been invited to the Underclassmen Awards Ceremony. If you have received an email invitation, please RSVP this week, and that means today. Last week, we looked at the district's hazard plan and the event of a train derailment in our own town. Today, Danny checks back in to see how the local government would respond to an environmental issue. <laughs> On February 3rd, 2023, a 38-car Norfolk Southern train, of which 11 carried dangerous and toxic materials, derailed in East Palestine, Ohio. East Palestine is a town bordered in western Pennsylvania. The derailment caused an initial fire, which worried locals. The following day, the EPA held a controlled burn to prevent an explosion. The controlled release burn chemicals like vinyl chloride, acrolein, phosgene, and butyl acrylate, all hazardous to people and the environment. EPA contractors were called to the scene and the townspeople within a mile of the crash were evacuated. As of late February, 4,000 cubic yards of soil and 1.1 million gallons of water have been extracted from East Palestine. Vinyl chloride in particular is a resistant and fast-moving gas able to exist for years in contaminated soil and water, even with intense removal efforts. Thousands of fish, amphibians, and other organisms were killed immediately following the Norfolk Southern derailment. Norfolk and Southern owned the tracks in East Palestine. They also owned the tracks running straight through Fleetwood. 
Several trains run through Fleetwood each day. The recent train crash in East Palestine has raised concerns about a possible catastrophe happening in our town. We talked to Tammy Gore, the mayor of Fleetwood, about what this would mean for Fleetwood, as well as plans currently in place to limit the damage if this were to happen. A train goes through Fleetwood on average every 15 minutes. Um, so it's a very active train track, and so it's certainly something that we consider and look at. A Norfolk Southern derailment in Fleetwood could release toxic chemicals into the air, which affects the water table and the soil, harming the environment and ruining local farms. Fleetwood's team of talented firefighters are prepared to protect the environment and its people. While Norfolk Southern is not required to disclose what their trains are carrying, they do have an app called NS Tracks. NS Tracks allows authorities to access Norfolk information, such as what the train is shipping, where it is shipping to, and when it will be passing through the Fleetwood area. The EPA would react similarly to the derailment in Fleetwood as they did and continue to do in East Palestine. All that ground that gets contaminated, they're literally going to bring in excavators, bulldozers, and trucks and they're going to dig that ground up and they're going to haul it away. The EPA will have to react accordingly, depending on the chemicals, the expanse of the derailment, and how much of the environment was involved. It is difficult to completely prevent a derailment and protect the environment in advance. However, like in East Palestine, the efficient and cautious extraction of soil and water will play an important role in preserving local environments in case of Reporting for Tiger TV News, I'm Daniel Orozco. Thanks, Danny. I'm glad to know we have hazard plans in place, but let's hope we never need to use them. Prom is tomorrow. Congratulations to those students who are nominated to prom court. For prom queen, we have Emma Flammer, Chanel Hercules, Caitlin Pileski, Kylie Schrader, and Delaney Walker. For prom king, there is Baxter Beal, Andrew Haas, Jacob Carnish, Ian Miller, and Jared Spies. For prom princess, there is Bridget Dazowitz, Izzy Finari, Carly Carnish, Brielle Mark, and Ava Salee, and nominated for Prom Prince are Dominic Burrell Cobran, Liam Hilbert, Ryan Hiromiak, William Marek, and Riley Spanith. Good luck to those nominated and to everyone attending. Be safe and have a great time tomorrow night. Now let's check in with Ben for the sports. Thank you, Riley. In local sports, baseball fell to a record of 11 and seven last night as they lost to Muhlenberg by a score of eight to zero. Last week, baseball played a one, an away game versus Reading in First Energy Stadium. Nate stopped in to check on how that game went. The Fluid Tigers baseball team was on the road last week in a big divisional crossover game against Reading at First Energy Stadium. The Tigers were coming off three big wins earlier in the week and came in with a chance to sweep the week. County playoff hosts were on the line for both teams. Ryan Moser took the mound for the start for the Tigers. After a scoreless first inning, Carson Bry broke open the scoring for the Tigers with a two-run home run to left center field. His approach going into the bat was none different than any other game. You know, just try to move the base runner, hit it the other way. It was crazy. First time hitting a home run, especially at this beautiful field. The Tigers were able to tackle in that inning, and the Tigers led 2-0 to zero after two. Over the next two innings, Lute was able to pile on six more runs with help from Aiden Sumas and Travis Loy, who each contributed two RBIs. Fleetwood would pull Ryan Moser after throwing four scoreless innings and bring on Zach Dobek in relief. Heading into the bottom of the sixth, Fleetwood still leading 8-0, Redding would start to rally back by getting two runs of their own. After a tough inning on the mound for Zach, Fleetwood went to the bullpen again and brought in freshman Wiley Lloyd to try and close out the last inning. Redding did not go down without a fight as they were able to put up two more runs in the bottom of the seventh, but it wasn't enough to complete the comeback as the Tigers won 8-4.
Coach Green, the Tigers head coach, talked about the rest of the season and how he thinks the Tigers can finish. Uh, this week and next week, we're, we're getting into the, the toughest part of our schedule. we got all league games left, and, uh, and hopefully we'll win more than we lose. So. Flea would extend their winning streak to four games and are back in action next week with a chance to clinch a division. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I am Nate Herb. Thanks, Nate. Baseball is back in action tonight at home versus Conrad Weiser at 4 o'clock. Softball was also in action versus Muhlenberg last night, rising to a record of 10-6 with a 14-4 win. The team is on the road tonight with a 4-15 game in East Pennsboro. Boys volleyball fell to a record of 10-5 on Tuesday after a loss to Governor Mifflin. The team hosted their senior night last week. Let's look, take a closer look at the celebration. Last Thursday, the boys volleyball team played Reading Senior High. This game was special as it was Fleetwood's last home game of the regular season and their senior night. Before the game, eight seniors were celebrated for their commitment and contribution to the team, as well as their journey through high school so far. Fleetwood went on to beat Reading 3-0, sweeping them and helping to put them in county playoff contention. The volleyball team looks to get the win on get back on the winning track as they face Exeter tonight at 6 o'clock in the main gym. Taking a look at national sports, the Sixers took an early series lead versus the Celtics thanks to a dominant game one from James Harden. Last night, the Celtics evened the series in spite of the Sixers getting their league MVP Joel Embiid back off an injured reserve. Game three shift the series to Philadelphia tomorrow night. The Phillies have struggled versus the Dodgers over the past few days. Bryce Harper returned to the lineup on Tuesday as a designated hitter, absolutely shattering the recovery timeline for his Tommy John surgery. Hopefully Harper is able to get the spark in what seems to be a slumping offense. And that should just about wrap it up for this week in sports. Let's send it back to the news desk. Thanks, Ben. Next, let's go to our weekly segments. Let's check in with Mr. Farr for this week's Random Ramblings. Cup of Destiny, here we go. Let's see what we got. The best computing language. Wow, I could talk for hours on this one. The best computing language. I mean, come on. We have Python. We have C++. We have Java, JavaScript, BASIC, TrueBASIC, ADA, QBASIC. I, I mean, you got to get into the ones like white space, where literally it's the spaces that tell the program what to do. You look at the screen and you see blank white. That's a really good one. Um, but I definitely have to say the best computing language out there is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Every famous quote, like, get to the choppa, means something different to your computer. Thanks, Mr. Farr. I'm not sure what I'll be back means in Schwarzenegger coding language, but you'll be back for another Random Ramblings next week. Next up, let's check in with Eli for This Week in History. On May 1, 1960, an American U-2 spy plane was shot down over the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union captured the pilot, Gary Powers, which prompted the continuing deterioration in relations between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. On May 2, 1933, a local newspaper publishes an account by a local couple who claimed to have seen an enormous animal rolling and plunging on the surface of Loch Ness. On May 3, 1968, the first heart transplant in Britain is successfully carried out by a team of 18 doctors and nurses at the National Heart Transplant in London. On May 4, 1970, after a number of days of protests against U.S. invasions of Cambodia, the National Guards fired upon protesters at Kent State University. Three were killed and a further 10 were injured. That's all for this week in history. I'm Elijah Dove, reporting for Tiger TV News. Thanks, Eli. Ava is back with a new episode of Culture Check.
Hello and welcome back to Culture Check. I'm your host, Ava, and Saturday, April 22nd was the 16th annual Record Store Day. Established in 2007, Record Store Day is a day that celebrates independent record stores throughout the nation by releasing limited edition and rare records to these small businesses. Record Store Day is celebrated on one Saturday in April, as well as on Black Friday in November. Music collectors gather to purchase limited releases from their favorite artists, and this year hosted a diverse range of sounds, including live recordings of the 1975, an album from animated children's show Bluey, a collector's album from Blur, an album from a studio session with Taylor Swift, and much, much more. With about 300 albums being released, music fans all across the board can find something they like. Some stores even host live performances from local bands to celebrate, such as our local Kutztown record store, Young Ones Records, with local acts Tuck Smith, Airspace, and more. Thanks for watching, and with that, I'm Ava Crosley, and this has been your Weekly Culture Check. Thanks, Ava. Last but not least, let's check in with Ian for this weekend's weather. All right, let's see what we got for the weather. So we got a low of 45 and a high of 56 for today, and there's going to be some mostly cloudy in there. Let's check in with the radar. Now, nothing much on the radar, but prom is tomorrow, which is very exciting. So at 5 o'clock tomorrow, it's going to be partly cloudy, so you won't be staring into the sun when you're taking pictures. That's always a plus, and it's going to be 60. All right, so let's check out this weekend. All right, we got a high of 67, a low of 44 for Saturday, and that's going to be mostly sunny. And a high of 71 and a low of 49, and that's going to be partly cloudy. All right, let's take it back to the news desk. That's all we have for you today. Have an amazing Thursday, and have a great weekend.